Light is all around us. From the flame on a birthday candle to the setting of the sun, our world is filled with light. I am here to tell you about two of the most important properties of light, reflection and refraction. Reflection takes place when light bounces off a surface. Refraction, on the other hand, is the bending of light that takes place when light travels from one material, say air, into a different material, water for example. But let's talk about reflection first. Here's a reflective surface. This line is called the normal, an imaginary line that meets the reflective surface at 90 degrees. Light that strikes the surface at a particular angle relative to the normal will bounce off or reflect at the same angle. This is called the law of reflection. This seems pretty intuitive. Anyone who's played ping pong expects the ball to bounce off the table at more or less the same angle that it hits the table. However, to delve into the reason for the law of reflection, we have to turn to a couple of famous physicists for help. In 1690, Dutch mathematician Christian Huygens proposed that every point on a wavefront may be considered the source of secondary wavelets that spread out in all directions, with a speed equal to the speed of propagation of the wave. So while we think of individual units of light, or photons, as particles, it's sometimes useful to think of light as behaving as a wave. This is called the wave-particle duality of light, and explains properties of light like wavelength, frequency, and as we'll see, reflection. In this animation, you can see the incoming light wave. As each portion of the wave front strikes the reflective surface, wavelets radiate out in all directions. But the preponderance of the reflected wave front is moving away from the normal at the same angle as the incident wave front. This is a very cool illustration of why the angles of incidence and reflection are the same. Another 17th century physicist, Pierre de Fermat, observed that the path taken between two points by a ray of light is the path that can be traversed in the least time. This explains reflection in a different way. A beam of light going from A to B will travel the shortest path by way of point C. All other possible paths make for a longer journey, violating Fermat's principle of least time. Now let's talk about refraction. This image illustrates refraction. Our eyes are tricked because the light from the submerged portion of the straw bends as it leaves the glass, causing our brain to interpret the straw as looking crooked. Going back to our wavefront animation, you can see that as the wavefront strikes the water, we see the same wavelets, but they travel slower through the dense water. The preponderance of the refracted wavefront moves through the water at an angle to the normal smaller than the incident angle, making for an angle of refraction that is smaller than the angle of incidence. Using Fermat's principle of least time, we can see again that the beam takes the shortest time to get from A to B. A smart lifeguard rescuing a drowning person wouldn't run directly to the water and swim a long way, and likewise they wouldn't waste time running a long way to the water for a shorter swim. The smart lifeguard, like the light beam, splits the difference and takes the path that minimizes the travel time to the destination. One more interesting thing. Let's look at refraction in reverse. Light traveling from a dense medium, glass for example, to a less dense medium, like air, will bend away from the normal. If you increase the angle of incidence enough to a critical angle, the point at which the angle of refraction equals 90 degrees, the light doesn't refract, doesn't exit the dense medium, but instead is reflected. This is called total internal reflection, and is a defining characteristic of fiber optics, glass fibers that carry light. The degree to which light will be bent is determined by the material's index of refraction. This is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in the material. For water, it's 1.333, which means that light travels 1.333 times slower in water than it does in a vacuum. Dutch astronomer Willebrord Snellius described what is now called Snell's Law, which states that the ratio of the signs of the angles of incidence and refraction is equal to the inverse of the ratios of the respected material's indices of refraction. This enables us to calculate the critical angle for any pair of materials. So next time you look in the mirror, correct your vision with contact lenses, enjoy seeing a rainbow, or sip from a straw, remember, reflection and refraction.